Chapter 2, Survival and Elimination Special Exam After winter vacation, school life took a fresh start. The greetings with classmates who I hadn't seen for about two weeks until the new year were a bit awkward, but other than that, the days passed uneventfully. When would the next special exam be conducted? While everyone in the class would have that in the back of their minds, Horikita, who had received hints from Senpais, was more concerned. Chabashira Sensei, the homeroom teacher who symbolized the start of a new school day, appeared. Her expression was always stern, heading to the podium with a serious face without a hint of levity. However, even though everything was as usual, some of the students naturally sensed that something was different. Observing everything from the back of the room, I reached the same conclusion. Thursday, when half of the week had already passed, it seemed finally time for the prelude to begin. Good morning. Today I want to talk about our first special exam of this third term. Just as teachers had been observing their classes for two years, students had also been observing the teachers as well. Not many of you are surprised. You've gotten good at understanding the timing, I see. If so, the announcement would be quick. Chabashira Sensei straightened herself and looked over at the students. I'd like to get right into the explanation. This special exam has slightly complicated rules. Chabashira Sensei turned on the monitor and started the software. This special exam will only be conducted among second year students. Initially, it was revealed that it wasn't going to involve other years like the first and third years. This is going to be a different rule set from the special exam where we compete side by side for first place or decide the winner in a one to one match with a specific class. I'll explain it with the help of diagrams to make it easier to understand. Let's take a look at the monitor. Data created by the school was quickly loaded and a file was opened. Survival and Elimination Special Exam The first line of text that appeared was believed to be the name of the next special exam. Despite being a mere exam name, there was a slight tension among the students. Survival and Elimination That sounds very dangerous. The usual candid words from E.K. However, that was an understandable impression. When you saw the word elimination, there was something that was inevitably associated with it. While students didn't explicitly say it, everyone associated it with expulsion. Chabashira Sensei, without commenting on the name of the special exam, began explaining the test content. In this special exam, there are diversified tasks based on categories prepared by the school. Each class will choose a category, select a difficulty, and issue a task to the target class in a specific order. A diagram of a square figure was given as an example. While the arrangement of these classes is just an example, with us being clockwise from class A, they will have us solve the task they chose and gave to class B, meaning class A is the attacking side in this case. On the other hand, class B is the defending side. Class B scores points by solving the task, i.e., the attack that came from Class A. Then, once this offensive and defensive action is done, Class B will be on the offensive side and will issue tasks to Class C. We will repeat this attack and defense while moving around the classes, and the offensive and defensive war between Class D and Class A at the end of the rotation, this will be considered one turn. From this initial explanation, it was clear that points for your own class didn't increase when attacking, but rather, points would increase depending on how many of the tasks you could do correctly when defending. After 10 turns, the first half will be over. The second half will invert the arrows counterclockwise, and another 10 turns will be held. We are going to repeat the offensive and defensive battles for a total of 20 turns. Another figure was courteously displayed for the counterclockwise rotation. It was still unsure how the class arrangement would be decided, but the fact that there wouldn't be any offensive and defensive actions against the class located diagonally couldn't be overlooked. It would be an additional mental burden to wage a defensive and offensive war against a class that posed the greatest threat to one's classmates. Next, I will detail the tasks for the offensive side. 
The categories provided by the school, as I mentioned at the beginning, cover a wide range. From fundamental academic skills such as literature, economics, English, arithmetic, kanji, and history, to subjects which are not related to academics, such as subculture, and entertainment. Do students need stuff like entertainment? I'm not good at that. Pseudo expressed his aversion openly towards the unfamiliar term mentioned. Indeed, some areas might not be primarily related to a student's responsibilities. But those who are ignorant of the world are often eliminated when they step into society. In other words, even if you can't study, those who can follow the conversation are often treasured. This means that this time, your general knowledge as a human being will be tested. With that explanation, some understood while others were still confused. The air was tense. Sensing this, Chabashira Sensei added to her explanation. It seems there are some who find it hard to understand, so let me simplify it. Basically, it has aspects similar to a quiz. The attacking class will present a quiz, and the defending class will solve it. It's as simple as that. This description was extremely clear, and many students began to show their understanding simultaneously. At the same time, there were also those who wore baffled expressions. Competing with a quiz, indeed, if you just proceed with that image alone, it wouldn't be unreasonable. However, not all successful people are only excellent in academics. Regardless of their final academic level, many possess something noteworthy besides that. In that sense, it couldn't definitively be said that knowledge in areas like entertainment was completely unnecessary. If you were to enter into the entertainment industry, there would be a significant difference between knowing nothing and having an abundant amount of knowledge. Non-academic knowledge would also be tested when facilitating smooth communication with superiors and subordinates. If you could fully utilize your skills, it would be a plus in many cases, without a doubt. Offense Select the category and difficulty. Nominate a student and attack. Attack limit The same student may be nominated consecutively. It is also possible to repeatedly choose the same category. Nominate five students of the target defensive class to the staff in charge within three minutes of starting. If unable to make nominations within the time limit, the remaining number of students will be selected randomly. List of possible categories for questions. Literature, history, science, society, sports, entertainment, music, economics, general knowledge, English, arithmetic, news, kanji, lifestyle, gourmet food, subculture. Difficulty level. Three levels, from one to three. The higher the number, the greater the difficulty. Target number. Five people. Indeed, as the school had mentioned, the special exam covered a wide variety of topics. There were 16 choices for just the category. The attacking class will first select a category from among these. Won't everyone just pick the highest difficulty level for their opponents? During Chabashira Sensei's explanation, this seemed to have unintentionally slipped out of Ike's mouth. After muttering that, he hurriedly covered his mouth, but it was already too late. In the awkward silence that followed, he timidly looked up at Chabashira Sensei. While there was a strong negative impression around interrupting someone mid-explanation, Chabashira Sensei, albeit sighing, didn't seem too harsh on him. Be careful with your careless remarks, Ike. Why yes, I'm sorry. The attacking class will select the difficulty level after choosing the category. The basic, first level is of average difficulty. The second and third levels with higher difficulties can also be chosen, but to do so, you need to spend the points that you have acquired. For every point you spend, you can increase the difficulty level by one. The special exam rules began to be broken down little by little. Apparently, the attacking side was not just about choosing a category. The attacking side will nominate five people from the defending class and assign them tasks. You can keep selecting the same student, 
or you can change who you select. The same applies to categories. There seem to be no restrictions at all on the nomination of students and the category selection. Whether to aim at an unspecified majority or to continuously target a specific student, it was all at the discretion of the attacking side. But what if the opponent's class is aware of the categories we're weak in? It wasn't unreasonable to immediately come to that conclusion. If we're constantly attacked in areas we aren't good at, the probability of getting all the questions wrong wouldn't be low. I understand feeling uneasy, but this isn't a special exam that specifically requires you to overcome your weak subjects ahead of time. In this special exam, individual knowledge is important, but it also becomes crucial how well the class understands each other. It isn't just about taking on the given tasks indifferently, but there's a system where, at times, a leader can protect students and decide when to attack based on the situation. Defense by the leader's nomination, up to five individuals can be protected for each task. If a student, who was nominated to be protected, is within the five individuals nominated by the attacking side, they will be treated as if they answered correctly. Within three minutes after the attacking side has finished their task, the leader shall nominate five individuals from their class and declare it to the staff in charge. If unable to make nominations within the time limit, the remaining number of students will be chosen randomly. Excluding Categories Each student can choose to exclude up to three of the 16 categories beforehand. The attacking side can't choose the excluded categories. Elimination If a student answers incorrectly three times in total, they will be eliminated and cannot be targeted for nomination. Moreover. For every person eliminated, one point will be deducted. Even if the score is zero, negative points will accumulate. Scoring If an answer is correct or protected successfully, one point is given for each person. Incorrect answers will not deduct points. At this point, some of you might be confused, but because you can exclude five people every time you defend, if someone is being specifically targeted, you can prioritize protecting that person. Of course, if the attackers think you will protect, they will change their target each time. You guys will have to make various strategies beyond just getting the answers right. As Chabashira Sensei said in advance, it could be called a slightly complicated special exam. However, when untangled, there were surprisingly simple aspects to it, and it consisted of repeating the same process. Also, during this special exam, both the attacking and defending sides are allowed to discuss and consider necessary matters among themselves. However, all final decisions will be made by the leader elected by the class. It is a position that holds a lot of responsibility. It was entirely up to the leader if they chose to represent the views of their classmates or not. Such a role could not be left to someone indecisive or someone who could lose their sense of judgment. Also, if a class with any eliminated students sinks to the bottom of the four classes, one of those eliminated students will be expelled. Wow! E expulsion, seriously. I thought it was possible, but. Somewhere, a small scream rose among the students. And the reward for this special exam is as follows. Rewards. First place, 100 class points. Second place, minus 50 class points. 3nd place, minus 50 class points. 5nd place, minus 100 class points. If there are multiple classes with the highest score, an extension will be held to determine the outcome. If all four classes finish the test with the same score, everyone's class points will be deducted by 100. What the heck is this? Other than first place, all the class point rewards are negative. It was only natural that voices of surprise and dismay rose from the students. Only one class could be the actual winner among the four. However, if one deeply analyzed the rules, they would be able to predict why only one class could be the victor. 
As noted in the reward description, if all four classes conspired and colluded prior to the special exam, they could potentially finish the exam with equal scores. This rule was in place to prevent such scenarios. Given that all ranks below the first are in the negative, it becomes practically impossible for classes to collaborate across boundaries. Even if they joined forces, only one class could win. Of course, it wouldn't be impossible if they used unconventional methods, such as the contract Ryuan and Katsuragi made during the deserted island exam last year in summer, in which they forfeited class points in exchange for private points. However, collaboration was unlikely unless it could ensure a secure first place. By those rules, it was easy to obtain high scores if classes collaborated, but the school's restrictions to prevent this from happening were more powerful than expected. This was also a rare opportunity to expel a specific student by making their class lose. It was hardly plausible that they would give up this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity without something significant in return. The only viable cooperative relationship could be an agreement not to eliminate each other. This method was fair to all classes and could also purchase safety. However, Setting aside Horikita and Ichinos, the possibility of such a proposal getting through to Ryuan or Esekayanagi was low. Furthermore, due to the attack and defense mechanisms, they inevitably need to fight against two classes, and adhering to a no-elimination policy wouldn't be easy. In the event that there are multiple eliminations in the lowest-ranked class, the class leader will nominate one from among the eliminated. Of course, the nominated student cannot refuse. If there are classes tied for the lowest rank, there is a possibility that there will be expulsions from multiple classes. This meant that if any of the students in the lowest ranked class were eliminated, there would definitely be at least one expulsion. The only exceptions would be if 20 million points were paid or when a student holding protection points was eliminated and selected. It would be possible to avoid that if the lowest ranked class kept the number of eliminated students to zero, but that was nearly impossible under normal circumstances. Excuse me, may I ask a question? Horikida, who was sitting in front of Chabashira Sensei, raised her hand to ask for permission to speak. Yes, what is it? What happens if the leader is eliminated midway through the special exam? Also, Will those who are eliminated be required to do something like leaving the room? To answer the easier question first, even if you are eliminated, you just won't be nominated by the attacker afterward. You'll continue to wait in the same place as the other students and are free to participate in the conversation. In other words, they would be put on the eliminated list, but there wouldn't be any other restrictions. As for a leader getting eliminated, the leader does not participate in any tasks to begin with. This means that they cannot be nominated by the attacker and therefore have no fear of being eliminated. The leader only directs and doesn't fight. Correct. Those who are chosen as leaders are effectively exempted from the risk of expulsion. Whether they consider this a perk or not is up to the individuals. The class leader, who would lead the fight, won't bear the risk of expulsion. However, if the class were to lose, the leader must nominate an eliminated student to be expelled. The responsibility of being a leader is already a heavy burden if they lose, and yet they have to undertake the task of expelling a comrade without being able to take responsibility themselves. Although it was a position that assured safety, hardly any student would eagerly want to undertake the responsibility of determining victory or defeat and having to select comrades to abandon if they lose. While someone like Ryuan or Esekayanagi might easily undertake such merciless tasks, most other students would likely refuse. The role of pushing the button to eject the floorboard of a condemned prisoner was extremely harsh. Also, it's important to note that during this special exam, the use of mobile phones will be permitted at all times, except when the defensive side is solving a problem. Eh, it's allowed. Rather, it might be said that phones are indispensable for this special exam. The other class's details will be disclosed after the exam starts, so you will have to organize the information in real time and find the optimal solutions to determine who is excluding which category. 
more than 100 students were spread across the three classes. There were about 80 even with just two target classes. It would be almost impossible to specify the categories without the class mustering all its resources to gather information. There were other advantages to being able to use phones. Usually, students who weren't good at speaking up found it difficult to raise questions about minor realizations. Frequently, they just swallow their small doubts and later find out that they were the key questions they should have asked. Through an app, they could easily send messages about their realized doubts, just to their specific friends, and ask for their judgment. Of course, you can also use it for the defensive side. It's up to you whether you cram knowledge into your head for the exam until the last minute or if you contact and negotiate with the opposing classes. Feel free to do as you wish. If the patterns of the questions during the exam become apparent, it should be possible to allocate some countermeasures. This added conditions we had never considered until now. If phones could be used, the scope for offense and defense would significantly widen. How quickly and efficiently we could share information seemed to be a point of the test. The special exam will be conducted next Friday. First of all, by the end of school next Monday, find time, decide the leader through mutual discussion, and let me know. If you can't choose a leader, as you can probably guess, we will randomly select one. With that, Chabashira Sensei exhaled a heavy sigh, seemingly ending her explanation of the special exam. I understand everything, but it's going to be a tough fight. All I can say is. She stared at the students, and then answered, do your best not to place last. That's it. In the special exam where failure would put losing your friends at risk, avoiding last place was absolutely necessary. There was a possibility that the third term special exam would be brutal, and that turned out to be precisely the case. Even if a student was academically or physically skilled, another class could apply a strategy that exploits the gaps in their knowledge and get them expelled. Nonetheless, I was impressed that this time, the mechanism wasn't structured on gaining points from attacking. As the defense's judgment was connected to the score, it became more important to face and consider your own class. It was a test to earn points through discussions with the leader and classmates. How well one knew the class and the enemy would affect the outcome of the battle. Chapter 2 Part 1 After Chabashira Sensei left the classroom, there was a little time before the morning lecture began. Since we didn't need to move between classes today, everyone would have usually passed the time with casual chatter, but today, it seemed that even that was a waste of time, and the students naturally gathered around Horikita. To calm the noisy classmates, Yosuke took the lead. Since we have limited time, let's recap the main points of the special exam's contents for now. To avoid them from becoming disorderly from idle chatter, he voiced that thought. It was almost certain, given nearly two years of experience, that there were almost no students who wouldn't listen. Noting the surrounding silence as agreement, Yosuke nodded and continued. The areas of concern for this special exam are that it's difficult to imagine placing last without an expulsion. Inevitably, there will be an expulsion from the class in last place. And while the odds are low, if a tie for last place occurs, multiple classes might have expulsions. The number of times a class receives an attack was 20 times. With 5 people each time, that was a total of 100. No matter how much the leader exerted their skills, it seemed inevitable that a few people would be eliminated. Due to the nature of the exam, students who get the second question wrong will be cornered. If you try to protect a particular student from being expelled, of course, the other classes will target the other students. If you continue to insist on protecting, the number of students who get two questions wrong will keep increasing. That thought would turn into one of the pieces for negotiations. The offensive needed to analyze the defending class and figure out who was weak in which subjects in order to attack effectively. They also needed to predict and evade the protection targets, so they wouldn't waste any points. The defending side also had to predict the offensive's plans and deal with them accordingly. 
Be careful that the eliminations won't only consist of students with lower abilities. It's natural for other classes to want to force capable students to be eliminated, looking at the future. If the class misjudges who to protect, even competent students could be at risk. In extreme terms, this was an exam where every student besides the leader had the potential to be expelled. Even excellent students like Yosuke and Kushida would buckle if they were continuously bombarded with questions, it wouldn't be impossible to make them drop out. Of course, this would only apply if there were no other students to prioritize, and the chances of forfeiting the class competition would be high, so it might not be a wise strategy. However, if this strategy was successful, the class would suffer damages beyond the loss of class points. Considering these factors, the reward for this special exam might be modest. Rather than placing the winner in a more advantageous position, this special exam emphasized putting the loser at a greater disadvantage. Just hearing this, naturally, you'd want to avoid elimination at all costs. However, what I really want to say is to avoid becoming overly anxious. While we are still unclear about the essence of the special exam, let's first start by unifying our overall awareness without causing a fuss. Horikita conveyed the apparent fear from the special exam but also ensured that wasn't everything. However, if left unattended, wild imaginations would naturally spread. Therefore, Horikita decided to gather the class in the classroom during lunchtime today to discuss it. It wasn't mandatory, but participation was encouraged as much as possible. Chapter 2 Part 2 Students without lunch hurriedly rushed to the cafeteria or convenience store and then returned to the classroom. About 10 minutes after the lunch break started, 37 classmates, excluding Koenji, had gathered in the classroom. Of course, they were there to discuss the approaching special exam. The plan was to eat and discuss simultaneously to effectively spend time. There were several important topics, but the first one was to properly understand the special exam and be able to confront it, as Horikita mentioned earlier. The other was probably the selection of the leader. It was expected that few would object if Horikita, who has done most of the work as a de facto leader, were to run for the position, but she did not speak up herself since the discussion had just begun. Although she wasn't the type to run away from important responsibilities, she probably wanted to listen to the other classmates' opinions first. There might also be others who wanted to nominate themselves. However, even if Horikita didn't speak up herself, others would consider nominating her as the leader. Horikita-san, I have one question before we begin our official discussion. If we ask you to take on the role of the leader in this special exam, would you accept? Yosuke took the initiative to ask a question that the class likely wanted to know. Instead of an unexpected student suddenly volunteering to become the leader, it would be safer to nominate Horikita, who was likely to produce reliable results, early on, for the sake of the class. However, everyone's thoughts may not have aligned with Yosuke's. In the unanimous vote special exam, as the person responsible for changing the policy and causing confusion in the class, Horikita gave a strong negative impression. But as expected, Yosuke showed no signs of such feelings. If I'm nominated by many, I have no intention of refusing. But in this special exam, while the leader carries great responsibility, there's also a rule that excuses them from the risk of expulsion or leaving school. If there are other potential candidates, I would like to listen to their ideas. On the other hand, Horikita didn't want to rush decisions. Because she understood the nature of the exam, she wanted to be careful in her judgment. This time, the leader bore the responsibility of strategizing and nominating, as well as the privilege of avoiding expulsion. They should assume that none of the 37 people present wished to be expelled. Then, it was possible that someone might show more capability than Horikita and benefit from the privilege of not dropping out, enough to wield their leadership effectively. But in most cases, this wouldn't happen, it was an idealistic scenario. In the end, the reality was that only those who wanted to secure their safety by becoming the leader would come forward. 
Even if someone volunteered for the role of leader for self-preservation, it was natural that the class wouldn't recognize that individual. After all, responsibility, preparedness, and the confidence to win the class over were demanded of the leader. Is there anyone here who wants to be the leader? If so, please tell us. Horikita, who had moved to a position on the podium where she could see the whole class, asked this question. The classroom fell silent right after, and the students just looked at each other as time passed. After waiting for about 30 seconds for a nominee to appear, Yosuke nodded. I guess that's the correct answer. To be honest, I don't think the leader's exemption from elimination or expulsion is a great benefit. If there's no other student who can take on such an important responsibility for the class, I would really like to leave it to you, Horikita-san. What do you think? Since there were no other candidates for the leader's position, Yosuke was trying to persuade Horikita to make a decision early on. Although there was no rush, deciding the leader was an important matter. A response was expected from Horikita, but her reaction was slightly delayed as she had been looking at her phone screen. It seemed like she was paying attention to the conversation, as she finally responded after closing her screen. Yes, of course, I intend to. I showed a reserved attitude to hear other people's opinions, but I always intended to take on the role of the leader. If there are no objections. Hold on a second. It's decided. The leader will be Horikita. Just as when such an atmosphere was beginning to form, Maizono raised her hand despite hesitating. I think there may be a little room for discussion. Yosuke momentarily stiffened, but he quickly regained his composure, keeping a smile on his face. Normally, he wouldn't show any weakness, but today was different. This caution was likely due to the special exam possibly leading to someone's expulsion. Certainly, I think Horikita-san is reliable. It's greatly appreciated that she's willing to take on such a responsible role as a leader. However, we can't afford to lose this special exam, right? If we rank last and have an elimination, that person will be expelled from class. Therefore, shouldn't we appoint the person who would give us the highest chance of winning as the leader? If she had said that she wanted to be a leader to ensure safety, Yosuke would likely have immediately dismissed it. Yet, this seemed to be a question of Horikita's ability as a leader. Surely, as you said, it would be best if the person who would give us the highest chance of winning becomes leader, but wouldn't Horikita-san make the appropriate decisions to win? Yosuke believed that Horikita was the best fit for the role. So, without any hesitation, he responded. I don't doubt Horikita-san's abilities at all. But is she really the best option? I think there's some room for discussion. Can't we find someone who can make better decisions in the class? Without pointing to anyone in particular, Maizono appealed to her classmates, including Yosuke. Yosuke managed to maintain his smile as he nodded several times, but he stumbled over his reply. Maizono's question was reasonable but rather awkward. It had the potential to spoil the atmosphere. During this, Ike, who didn't seem to be thinking deeply, reacted unexpectedly. So, Maizono, do you have someone better in mind? I don't get it. Calm down. It's just my personal opinion, but can I mention it? Maizono, who agreed with Ike, seemed to have someone in mind. Nobody had the right to stop her from speaking, so she continued. During the unanimous vote special exam, Horikita-san changed her opinion due to the flow of Kushida-san's expulsion, right? The person who should have taken responsibility at that time should have been a student who continued to vote against it. But I just have a feeling that she didn't stick to it where she should have. This time, the leader decides everything, right? And choosing who to expel from the eliminations is something we can't ignore. Ah, for the record, I don't mean to say that her decision was wrong. Although not all problems were resolved, the fact that Kushida-san is still in the class is a big plus. She emphasized that she didn't dislike Kushida for no good reason and spoke carefully. Naturally, 
even having her name mentioned probably annoyed Kushida. She had more chances to take off her mask lately, but for now, she was still smiling. But whether that smile was warm or not was another matter. Above all, Maizono seemed to doubt whether Horikita was decisive and whether she deserved to be trusted. I'm just caught up on our leader's decisiveness. Putting aside who else might be the best fit for now, is Horikita Sen really the best person to entrust with this exam? She proposed that they should reconsider whether it was a good idea to leave it to Horikita. If asked whether Horikita's decision-making ability was perfect at present, the answer would be no. I think it was a good question that should be welcomed. This was also important for Horikita. It was an opportunity to absorb the evaluations and thoughts of those around her. However, it was surprising to see Maizono so eloquently throwing doubt on Horikita's ability. I see, that's a hard truth. Indeed, at that time, I hesitated. I refused to follow the wishes of the class majority and made a personal decision. There's no denying that it's a fact. Hasebe, who had been maintaining a stern expression, showed a momentary clouding on her face but didn't go so far as to glare at Horikita. She would understand by now why Horikita had made such a tough decision at the time. I know that I have many immature aspects. I can't declare that I'm the best choice for the leader. Nevertheless, right now, no one else is stepping up to take the role. Even if no one has come forward, there may still be recommendations. If you ask other people, including myself, they may be able to give you more suitable candidates. Isn't it worth asking? I see, a recommendation. Of course, there might be some in the class who think someone else would be better than me. But I have already asked the class once. If there was a student who wanted to be a leader, they would have raised their hand. Is it okay to leave the decision to someone who doesn't nominate themselves? But. Or should we ask Koenji Kuen, who is the only one who hasn't participated in this discussion? He has a sharp edge and can undoubtedly make decisions. She said as if refuting Maizono's opinion. Koenji certainly possessed strong individuality that could answer any question. Maizono seemed a little irritated for a second, but she was unable to come up with a counterargument and stuttered. Your thinking is correct too. I agree with the opinion that we should search for someone stronger and faster in good decision making. So after listening to what you just said, I am asking the whole class. In this special exam, students who are confident that they can lead and guide the class to victory, please raise your hand. If someone emerges who I think is more suitable than me, I would gladly give up the leadership role. It was clear that she was referring to me, and some people turned their gaze in my direction, but of course, I didn't move. I have no intention of taking away the opportunity for Horikita to grow as a leader. And Horikita understood more than anyone that I stubbornly didn't want to nominate myself. That was why she merely suggested finding someone in the class with strong decision-making abilities. You couldn't fight with just the strength you kept within yourself. Indeed, unless you were so confident that you raised your hand, you couldn't be entrusted with this special exam. Certainly, as Horikita-san said, we can't make someone who doesn't nominate themselves a leader. Maizono withdrew her opinion in the face of a valid argument, and the situation settled down. While it may seem repetitive, Maizono's remarks weren't unnecessary or reprehensible. It was essential to prevent the bias that classmates should make Horikita the leader. Once again, it was whether Horikita was the most suitable leader for this class or not. As long as we could arrive at that answer each time, there was no need to worry in that regard. And when that question disappeared entirely, that was the moment when Horikita grew into a leader recognized by everyone in the class. It seems like we can move forward at last. Let's get back to discussing what this special exam is. We should also continue eating. Everyone stopped eating because of the tension. Perhaps due to the tense atmosphere, many students hadn't made much progress with their lunch. At Yosuke's words, some people hastened to eat again. Then, 
Horikita and Yosuke took the lead in explaining the overview and rules of the special exam. While Horikita was speaking, Yosuke continued eating, and while Yosuke was speaking, Horikita did the same. Including what they couldn't hear during Chabashira Sensei's explanation, by the time they moved into the second half of the lunch break, all students had deepened their understanding. And when the flow of exchanging opinions began, Sudo spoke somewhat forcefully, as if he had been thinking about something all along. What are we going to do about the guy who isn't here, Koenji? Do we have to protect him? That's what we promised, right? Koenji achieved the feat of being the sole person who placed first in the deserted island exam under the pretext of an advanced payment until graduation. In return, he gained the right to complete freedom. This meant unconditional protection for Koenji. Of course, this special exam also brought the risk of dropping out or expulsion to Koenji. This promise was made just before the deserted island exam, and many classmates heard about it. After the test, Horikita explained it, so it was a fact known to everyone. A timely topic. I just received a polite email that said, it goes without saying, but I'd be in trouble if you don't protect me from expulsion. As she answered, she showed her classmates the actual text on her cell phone screen. That's the worst, right? It means we'll be forced to have four protected slots. If the attackers were to realize that Koenji is always protected, of course, they'd avoid targeting him. But even if they avoided him, there was no guarantee he wouldn't be attacked. If we were to keep our promise, we must keep protecting him. Don't jump to conclusions. We can't say for certain that we need to constantly protect him. We'll think of some countermeasures. I won't discuss it in detail now, but don't worry too much. This part involved strategy, so we couldn't casually discuss it here. If the discussion became heated, it would be time-consuming, and lunch break alone wouldn't be long enough. Considering the remaining time, Horikita only reviewed the necessary points and answered questions related to them. Also, for the discussions related to strategy, Horikita indicated that they should be carefully conducted from the standpoint of information leakage. While ideas were welcomed as they came to mind, they were not to be exchanged in public places, such as classrooms and corridors where people pass, or on cell phones, where records can easily be left. Chapter 2 Part 3 School ended, and I headed to Kiyaki Mall with Kei. We hadn't originally planned to stop by today, but she had requested a detour. However, Kei, who had invited me, was not smiling as usual. She wore a gloomy expression. You've been down. What happened? Ah, uh, well. She seemed to want to say something, after some brief hesitation, she turned her eyes to me. Hey, hey, Kiyotaka. What will happen to me in this exam? If I continue to be targeted, I think it's absolutely impossible to keep answering correctly. Can you protect me? Unable to hide her anxious expression, Kay asked with fear. You're not the only one to lack confidence. Most of the students in the class are likely to be bearing similar anxieties, to a greater or lesser extent. Of course, Horikita, who is serving as the leader, fully understands this. It would be better if you're the leader, then I would definitely be protected. Although I deliberately avoided responding to that blind faith, at this point, it was a priority to dispel her anxieties. Horikita will protect her classmates. But even so, the chances of losing can't be reduced to zero. However, the deciding factor, in that case, is about who to let go. When there are several eliminations beside yourself, it won't be easy to specifically select you, who can lead the girls. Horikita also understands that you're my girlfriend. Even without my protection, you won't be an easy target for Horikita. This wasn't a viewpoint I intentionally guided, but rather how Horikita would naturally interpret things. If she wanted my cooperation in the future, Kei surely would not be the easy option to cut off. However, if there are other eliminations besides Kei, her priority will have to be higher than the others with these conditions taken into account. 
If it came down to a selection between Kei and Yosuke, no matter how much she holds the title of my girlfriend, changing Horikita's judgment would be impossible unless I forcibly intervened. Th that's right. I'm Kiyotaka's girlfriend. Horikita-san won't choose me easily. Ah, plus, the guarantee of protection can cover only around 5 out of close to 40 classmates each time. Taking that into account, it's not unusual for someone to be eliminated. If this proceeds for 20 turns, each class should be chock full of quite a number of eliminations. If we assume that 10 people drop out, it is unlikely for you, the leader of the girls, to be chosen. Isn't that right? Exactly. It wasn't an exception for Class A, full of honor students, to have many eliminations. Not having a single elimination and managing the class would, rather, strangle the class. To put it extremely, it would be okay even if half of the class is eliminated, as long as we can avoid being the bottom class. In order to give her a little more peace of mind, this follow-up wouldn't go to waste. Even just making her understand that her worth was by no means low reduced the burden on her. The fact that she was my girlfriend provided a sense of security. However, depending on the perspective, it could also be interpreted as a risk factor. If there was someone who wanted to damage me, there was a good chance they would directly target K. In any case, this special exam had aspects that made each student reconfirm their value. Who was necessary and who was unnecessary for the class, it forced you to look at it both from the inside and the outside. Chpader 2 Part 4 On my way back from Kiyaki Mall, I found Morishita lying down on a bench. What the? K who was sitting next to me, looked at Morishita with a puzzled, and slightly taken back, expression. She was unable to understand how she ended up lying down on a bench with her eyes closed even though it wasn't particularly sunny. Even though the snow had thawed, it was still mid-January, the middle of winter. Is she dead? Thinking about it, is it even slightly possible that this could be the end for Morishita? No, she's not. K who was beside me, interjected and denied it. That's correct. I'm not dead. Morishita, who sat up with a pouty face, looked at us with a somewhat sleepy face. It seemed like she was about to fall asleep. It was impressive that someone could get drowsy under this freezing sky. What are you doing in such a place? Are you curious? It would be a lie if I said I wasn't interested but... Then, I'll explain. I was, believe it or not, waiting for you, Ayana Koji Kiyotaka. As Kei tried to inquire further just on a curious level, she cut her off and explained. Although she spoke politely, the way she referred to me without honorifics slightly bothered me. Eh, do you know each other? Of course, Kei would be surprised as well. I wouldn't say we're acquaintances. We've only talked once. Hmm. You sure know many girls from other classes, don't you, Kiyotaka-kun? Kei looked up at me like a teacher, as if cross-examining a student, her arms folded and her gaze prying. I didn't talk to her first. It doesn't matter who talks first. The fact that the conversation took place is the problem. She had a rather unreasonable opinion. Of course, I knew she wasn't serious even when she said it sincerely. You said you were waiting for me. But if I hadn't spoken to you, what were you planning to do? I thought it'd be fine to ignore Morishita's presence here and had only spoken to her by chance. No need to worry. I was slightly opening my eyes, so I would have noticed if you passed by. I couldn't understand why she was lying down if she wasn't sleeping. I felt like I'd lose if I thought too deeply about Morishita's behavior. Why were you waiting for me? What do you think? I didn't expect you to ask me back. I can't possibly guess. As it turns out, I've had a stroke of luck. It's about that girl over there, specifically. Eh, me? Kay pointed at herself in surprise, not thinking she was involved. Yes. I was curious about what kind of person you are. Curious? What do you mean? I noticed something strange as I was investigating. As Morishita slowly stood up, she directed her sleepy eyes towards Kei, gradually moving closer. 
What? What's this? Morishita had a unique aura, different from Hiyori. It wasn't calmness or harmony, but rather simply bizarre. K also seemed to have fully sensed Morishita's eccentricity quickly, so she was somewhat taken aback. Karuizawa K. You were initially dating Hirata Yosuke, right? Ah, uh, indeed, both K and Yosuke used each other's first names. So what? Why did you date Hirata Yosuke? No, why would Hirata Yosuke date a woman like you in the first place? Like a detective cornering a criminal, Morishita started to walk around K. Wait, wait, aren't you saying something rude? I researched Hirata Yosuke in my own way too. He's supposedly the most popular guy in school. He belongs to the soccer club, which factors into his popularity, he has excellent academic performance, he's blessed in looks, he respects gender equality, and he's kind, considerate, and intelligent. There were a few things that caught my attention in the way it was phrased, but as an evaluation of Yosuke, it was valid and accurate. In short, on the surface, it was fair to call him an exceptional student. He had a tendency to get hurt easily and drive himself into a corner, but that wasn't something to be mentioned, so it was omitted. Do you think he would pick a casual woman like you? What do you mean by casual? I don't know. It's the first time I've heard the term. She lied. Casual means irresponsible and nonchalant. It carried the feeling of being nonspecific. If I told Kay here, it would lead to the start of a dispute. Morishita softly stroked Kay's puzzled cheek with her index finger. Don't touch me without permission. It seems you're holding back now, but initially, despite being a first year in high school, you were rumored to be wearing heavy makeup. That's... That's just my choice. You're a casual woman, you have nothing unique, and you wear heavy makeup. I can't figure out why Hirata Yosuke chose you. Well, um, maybe because I was cute. Without mentioning anything like asking Yosuke for help as camouflage to hide her past of being bullied, she provided a convenient self-assessment. If you replace heavy makeup with a mask, it would be easier to understand, you're a timid and sensitive soul. But if so, being strong-willed and assertive, a leader among girls, seems contradictory. There was no doubt she was a weirdo. But Morishita seemed to be a student with enough intelligence to gather information and recognize doubts. What's up with you? Exposed to such a transparent reasoning, Kay was disturbed. If we continued to talk together, it probably wouldn't go in a good direction. I don't think love makes sense. I began dating Kay because of our feelings. Is there a problem with that? As I moved in protectively towards Kay, she seemed pleasantly surprised by my words and narrowed her eyes in joy. I see, that's true. I've never been in love, so I can't deny that reason doesn't apply. If love was something that could be calculated, I wouldn't have spent so much time on it. I apologize for my earlier rude remarks, Karuizawa Kay. Moving right in front of Kay, Morishita bowed deeply, too deeply, and remained that way. You don't have to apologize that much, I understand. Is that so? Then, since the apology is over, there's no problem, right? Eh. Well, that's fine, but it doesn't sit well with me. I could understand that feeling all too well, but there was nothing that could be done. I don't want to intrude any further, so I think I should take my leave. You finally understand. You're a better girl than I thought. At this point, the safest move was to let Morishita go, but the opportunities to make contact with her weren't that numerous. I decided to raise a question that had been bothering me. For a student in Sakayanagi's class, you're quite unique, aren't you? Don't you get told that by others? Kay, who was standing next to me, wore an expression as if she was going to hold me back but I waited for an answer without concern. Certainly, I often hear that, that I'm unique. That made sense. She definitely seemed unique. But it's funny. I've always been aware that I'm a unique person, and I've always thought of myself as special. Even so, I don't really like being reminded constantly, you're so unique. My apologies for that. But the fact is, 
I hadn't recognized that a student like you was in Sakayanagi's class these past two years. I see. You were surprised that a person you thought had no distinct personality turned out to be unique. That's right. I don't make any moves unless I'm interested. In the flow of Sakayanagi Arisu and Katsuragi Kohei leading the class as leaders, they have always protected the entirety of Class A, so there was no need for me to do anything. There was no need to show off my individuality. If I live quietly, I can graduate as is. I suppose it can't be helped if I appear to lack a distinct personality. Without concealing her situation, she spoke clearly about why she was perceived that way. Morishita's explanation was reasonable. Now, I was attracting attention to the point of being watched by students like Morishita. Although I was supposed to be just another inconspicuous student, I stood out as much, if not more than, Horikita. Additionally, I was being warily watched. Of course, this was solely because I had chosen to take action. If I had been in class A like Morishita when I enrolled, and if Sakayanagi and I hadn't known each other, the situation would be completely different. Even without doing anything, simply following instructions would secure class A's position. Nothing could have been easier. I would have spent my days as an ordinary student with no distinctive character, living quietly. A path to graduation without suspicion or caution from anyone. Morishita was merely drifting halfway along this quiet route. I'm glad I was able to meet the two of you today. Thank you for dealing with someone like me. Uh, you're welcome. For some reason, Kei also began to speak politely to match Morishita. Most of the students who enroll in this school aspire to graduate from Class A. I am one of them, of course. Therefore, I felt a sense of crisis and thought I should speak with various students. After all, you have attracted quite a bit of attention lately. Kay ruminated once again on her reason for reaching out in this setting. I may need to interact with both of you in the future. I would appreciate your kindness in that regard, Ayanokoji Kiyotaka, Karuizawa K. Morishita began to walk away after bowing her head deeply but stopped shortly afterward. She then turned around. The two of you were about to head home, weren't you? Well, Yes, but. I intended to return to the dorm as well. Would you like to join me for a chat along the way? Huh, wait. We just finished talking, and you want to talk more. Can't you read the room? This is a great opportunity. Don't hesitate to ask me anything. We're not interested at all. Don't be like that. Shall we even exchange contact information? Ayana Koji Kiyotaka included, of course. No, 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 we're not exchanging anything. Right? I don't mind exchanging contact information. Wait a minute. It's better to have more friends. That's a wonderful thought. I completely agree. Ugh, Kiyotaka, that side of you is kind of cute, I can't get mad at you. And so, we, reluctantly on Kay's part, decided to exchange contact information. A chat app could be quite handy, and it didn't hurt to have each other's information. One thing that caught my eye was that Morishita only had a few people registered on her chat app. She really seemed to have been living a quiet life until now, not making any friends. She was a bit strange in that respect. Chapter 3, The Sender's Identity It was Friday after school, one day after the special exam was announced. Following our previous class discussion during lunch yesterday, there hadn't been any meetings with the class as a whole, so no action pertaining to the exam was taken. Bearing the responsibility for leading the class, I hoped that Horikita had made progress in her strategies and ideas overnight. I didn't know the details, but she hadn't attempted to get in touch. There was still a week left, so there was no need to rush. I'd like her to think it through. Ayana Koji Kuen, um, do you have a moment? Mi Chan called out to me as I was getting ready to leave the classroom alone. Kay had already made plans to hang out with friends until late this weekend, so she was already gone. Therefore, I was completely free at the moment and could afford to spare the time. What's wrong? I'd like to talk somewhere else if possible, not in this classroom. 
Although no students around us seemed to be bothered, Michan didn't seem comfortable here. From her demeanor, it seemed like it was about something serious. I see. How about on our way back to the dorms? Of course. With no other reason to stay in the classroom, I grabbed my bag and we headed out. There was no need to find somewhere empty. The corridor and entrance were bustling with students after school, filled with noise. So, what's up? Upon my prodding, Michan glanced around as if to ensure it was safe, then started speaking. Do you remember when I was absent from school for a while? It's embarrassing to say, but it was about Hiratakuen. Well, that was from late September, after Kushida revealed in the unanimous voting exam that Michan had a crush on Hirata. Did something happen in relation to that? I heard that someone was delivering food while I couldn't go out. I remember. Someone was generously sending you meals, right? I recalled when I was asked if I was the one delivering food to Michan. I've mentioned it to you before, Ayana Koji Kuen, and I wanted to ask for your help. I see. A considerable amount of time had passed, but if she was bringing it up now, it meant. Did you find out who it was? Uh, I haven't yet, but I think we can find out if we try. We can find out if we try. Repeating her words, Michan nodded and started to speak slowly. Even after mustering the courage to return to school, it seemed that Michan was still concerned about the person who supported her. I thought she had given up on that, but she seemed persistent and wished to express her gratitude. There were two clues. The first was a note in a bag of groceries, containing only the room number, this hinted that it was a gift for Michan. If the handwriting was distinctive, it could be a crucial clue. Unfortunately, this was a curveball. Michan had brought the paper here for me to see, however, it was intentionally written in a way that made it impossible to identify the writer. The person who gave you these gifts is quite cunning. Indeed. There was only one remaining method to pursue the piece of evidence. It was true that all the food was purchased from the convenience store. Michan had noted every single item she had received. This meant we could describe these items to the store clerk and find out if any students had purchased the same things. Asking the convenience store staff was a classic move when trying to find the gift giver. But as time went by, their memory would inevitably fade, which meant we should move quickly. I had assumed that Michan wouldn't know about this, but I was surprised upon hearing her answer. I tried talking to the store clerk at the convenience store about it as soon as I returned to school. The response I got back wasn't good. The clerk Michan asked had just been assigned to the convenience store and wasn't working at the time the gifter made their purchases. The manager who would have been working during that time had been transferred to another store. A detective would probably look at the surveillance footage, but of course, I couldn't do that. I tried asking the girls on my floor as well, but they had no idea. That's when I decided to give up for a while. When there weren't any clues, there was nothing an ordinary student could do. I guess you would have had no choice then. Yeah. So time passed with the details still unknown. However, some unexpected information came to Michan, who was facing a dead end. When she visited a convenience store to shop the other day, a clerk called out to her. The transferred shift leader and the current clerk working at the school happened to meet, and the clerk remembered what Michan had been concerned about and explained it to him. He hadn't expected it, but because the event happened just before the transfer, he remembered a student who might be relevant. Consequently, the clerk apparently tried to tell Michan the name of the student that the manager had told them. However, I got caught off guard, or rather, I was shaken by the unexpected news, and I said I'd come back later to hear the details, and ran away. You ran away. I, ran away. Only Michan would know why she ran away in that situation. By the way, when did you hear of this? Um, that. Her obvious difficulty in answering indicated that it wasn't very recent. Today is the sixth day. You've been running away for quite a while. I've, been running. She turned red with embarrassment, or rather, shame at her pathetic self. I think I should go soon, but. 
I get nervous. If I don't know who it is, I can just ignore it, but once I know, I can no longer feign ignorance. Most importantly, the person who gave the gifts hasn't come forward, so there's a chance they don't want it to be known, right? She must have always wanted to thank the gifter, even if she didn't know who they were. But since she didn't know their identity, she was convinced that there was nothing she could do about it. The more time passed, the more she must have thought that way. Well, that's true. They supported Michan from the shadows without revealing their identity. It wouldn't be surprising if they had reasons to remain unknown. What reasons could there be? There could be many reasons. It would be impossible to narrow down the reasons with the current information at hand. Though, I'm sure they're a classmate. I don't have that many friends, but I don't think they'd hide it from me. I can't figure out why. Michan seemed to be pondering who among her friends it could be. Of course, one could hardly expect a stranger to send a gift. That's just one of the possibilities, no, never mind. What is it? Please tell me. I hesitated, considering that it might be too much for her, but Michan was eager to know. Please tell me. She asked again, so I decided to continue. Sorry to challenge your assumptions, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a classmate. While it wasn't known why you were absent, it wasn't difficult to find out about your absence. But I hardly have any contact with people from other classes. That doesn't matter much. A close relationship isn't a prerequisite. And it doesn't have to be a girl. Eh, what? She looked flabbergasted, she had even less interaction with boys. To be blatant, there might be, for example, a boy who secretly likes you, right? It could be a situation where he was worried when his crush was absent and sent a gift. E. What? She nearly fell over in surprise. She tried to remain discreet, but she was drawing attention. Realizing this, she quickly slowed her breathing but was noticeably flustered. It's just one possibility, no need to get flustered. It might not necessarily be the case. I was just illustrating a possible, yet unexpected reason. Wow well yes, you're right. But she was far from calm. I guess it was an unnecessary assumption to make. Let's get back on track. It would be better to hear your decision, don't you think? Even though I mostly had a grasp of her reasoning, I thought it would be better to hear it from Michan herself. I'm not sure what to do at this point. Should I find out who it is? Should I thank them? It would be best to make a decision now. Michan nodded slightly, without much confidence. What would you do in this situation, Ayana Koji Kuen? What would I do, huh? Though I pondered a bit, I might as well answer honestly. I'm not sure if it'll help, but if it were me, I'd want to know who they are. And then, I would decide whether to approach them or not. So you're saying there's a possibility you might not thank them even if you knew who they were? That's if it were me. As in the previous example, if the person had no connection to me, I'd hesitate. And there are cases when it's better not to let them know you've been looking into it, right? I guess that makes sense. They had secretly helped the one they loved. If she came to say thank you after learning their identity at the store, it would be shocking. This was the case even without involving romance. When the other party wants to maintain their secrecy, it's even more troublesome. Yes. Furthermore, whether you can keep quiet even after knowing the person's identity is another matter. From what I've seen, I don't think this approach is right for you, Michan. That. Yes. If she knew the answer, she'd probably fail to hide her emotions. It's not a bad thing to give up. Even so. However, Michan feels guilty for not being able to thank the person who had helped her. She was once again reminded of the feelings she had been trying to suppress. Even if she chose not to learn their identity, her feelings would take a long time to fade. Once you open the Pandora box, you can't close it anymore. Considering Michan's emotional instability, it was no surprise that she decided to run away. Furthermore, deciding not to learn of their identity has its own positive aspect. 
Knowing the identity of daddy long legs will change the perception of the person, regardless of who they are. Daddy long legs, this expression typically means mysterious benefactor or guardian. I. The troubled Michan took her time to come up with an answer. I. I want to know. Even though it might lead to regret. Yes. Having decided, there was no room for me to say otherwise. Then you should go to the convenience store. Despite my response, Michan still seemed hesitant, looking my way. The air was filled with a strange tension, but it was clear what Michan was trying to convey. Shall we go to the convenience store together? See can we? Despite having prepared to learn the truth, she seemed unable to go alone. I can accompany you. If it gives you a bit of courage, I believe it's worth it. Th, thank you, Ayana Koji Kuen. With the strongest nod of the day, Mi Chan and I walked to the convenience store. Chapter 3 Part 1 Mi Chan and I reached the convenience store almost immediately. I was about to enter the store first, but Mi Chan pulled on my sleeve. Could you wait a bit? It seems there are other students around as well. You want to wait until no one is around? It's unlikely, but the person who helped me might be here. I see. Those were delicate words, typical of Michan. It would only be right to consider them. Even though a lot of students visited the convenience store on weekends, they usually stayed for a short period of time. After waiting for a while, the store was empty in a flash. Shall we go in? Why yes. If we idle around, the next customer will arrive. We quickly walked into the store. Welcome, ah. The employee was a woman in her twenties, someone I had seen often lately. Seeing Michan, she stopped mid-sentence but continued with a smile. Welcome. Hello. Um, I'm sorry for running away the other day. As she quickly bowed, the lady staff smiled kindly. It's okay, it's okay, I'm not bothered at all. It must have been scary, right? It seemed like she understood her inner turmoil and Michan nodded several times. Did your boyfriend encourage you to come here? Eh. Michan, looking up, was puzzled. What a cool boyfriend, I'm jealous. Eh, eh, eh. Am my boyfriend? That's Ayana Koji Kuen, right? Why do you know my name? Well, we use student cards for store transactions, so I ended up remembering the names of some students. Indeed, we used a student card, containing a name and photo, for checkout. Since I shopped here several times, it wouldn't be surprising that they remembered me. Also, you were shopping arm in arm with a different student, weren't you? The other day. Ah. Your reaction seems to indicate that you've noticed something, but your assumption is wrong. She's my friend. When I pointed at Michan and answered, Michan also nodded affirmatively. Oh, so that's it. But there might be a Chan. There isn't. For the first time, Michan strongly denied it. I didn't have any romantic feelings for her, but why did I feel a bit dejected? Michan, who likes Yosuke, definitely wouldn't want her to misunderstand. So, um, the person I was looking for. Ah, uh, yeah. Should I tell you? Is that okay? The store clerk confirmed kindly out of consideration for Michan's feelings. Yes. I came for that reason. I see. I'll tell you then. After taking a breath, the clerk revealed the person Michan had been searching for. The previous shift leader didn't remember his name, but he was very distinctive, so when I heard about him, it rang a bell. Someone from your class, Koenji, um, Rokusuke Kuen, I guess. He seemed to be the one that bought the items that matched what you brought in. Ha! Huh. The name of the person who gave the gift, a fact she longed to discover. It was Koenji, of all people. Why Koenji? Michan next to me was undoubtedly surprised, or rather, flabbergasted. An unexpected name. Too unexpected. Or maybe it wasn't as surprising as I first thought. Koenji and Michan had little contact together. 
but there were times when I saw Koenji taking a relatively warm attitude towards Michan. That on its own wouldn't seem significant, however, the person in question was Koenji. He. Was it really Koenji Kun? The clerk nodded without a doubt to her drained question. The shift leader remembered him as a long haired, blonde boy. He was always acting high and mighty, even losing himself in the reflection of the convenience store glass, or setting his hair with a hand mirror. Anne. The list goes on and on, but this is Koenji Kun, right? I've seen him act that way too. That was definitely Koenji. No one else like him exists at our school not at this moment. And probably never will. There seems to be no mistake. Yeah, even the contents of the gift are like Koenji. It makes sense now. Yes. She couldn't fully take in the situation, but she had no choice but to accept it. She thanked the clerk and left the convenience store. Michan was still in a daze after leaving. She seemed stuck in her thoughts. Koenji Kun. Why? I have no idea. In a way, it was the person whose motives would be the least clear. What should I do? Is she wondering about how to thank him, or is she at a loss because it's Koenji? But maybe with Koenji, you can ignore him and not thank him. Eh, what? No, I can't. But why? Well, He's our classmate, and he also spent a considerable amount of money on the gifts. Koenji might have held a huge amount of private points, but money was still money. Michan, being so dutiful, couldn't ignore that. I'm thinking of buying a thank you gift. Should it be roughly equivalent to what was spent on the gifts? That's too much. I think half would do. It was a gift of goodwill after all, as long as the sentiment of gratitude was conveyed, that should be enough. Oh okay, got it. I'll do that. Then all that's left is to do your best in thanking him properly. I was about to say goodbye and start walking alone when. Would you come with me? Pardon? 2. Koenji Kuen's place. Asking why would be a bit too much. But it would be strange for me to be there, wouldn't it? While I wanted to support the timid Michan, it did feel a bit out of place. Moreover, I didn't know why Koenji decided to help in the first place. What if your assumption is correct? No matter how much you say that you're dating K, he might have thoughts if he sees a guy accompanying the girl he likes. But the person in question is Koenji Kun, right? Even Koenji is a normal high school boy. No. He's not exactly normal, is he? If my presence would disturb him, that would be something I'd like to see. Well then, let's go together for now. Depending on the situation, I might leave after seeing Koenji. I hope you understand. The possibility of him being uncomfortable because of my presence was very real. I understand. Thank you. Seemingly unable to ask for more, Michan readily agreed. When should we go? After I asked her, Michan pulled out her mobile phone and opened the calendar. Perhaps she was feeling uneasy, occasionally lightly touching the hair tie in her left hand. It's sudden, but would it be alright if we go early tomorrow? If we wait too long, I might have trouble sleeping. It would be cruel to let her stay up all night with her mind filled with thoughts of Koenji. I have a date with Kay tomorrow morning, but it should work out if we adjust our schedule. Thank you for today. We'll be meeting again tomorrow, but for now, please have my most heartfelt thanks. With that, she bowed her head deeply. She wanted to express her gratitude again once everything was resolved, but I had already refused. Chapter 3 Part 2 The following day arrived. It was just before 11.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I was waiting on the dorm lobby couch for my meeting with Michan. K, who had stealthily stayed over in my room Friday night and spent the early hours of the morning with me, was fast asleep. I was planning to delay our originally scheduled date for the afternoon. Seeing Michan come down the elevator from the installed monitor, I stood up from the deeply seated sofa. Good morning. Good morning, Ayana Koji-kun. She held a thank you gift presumably purchased the day before, 
in a paper bag. So, where are you meeting up with Koenji? Eh, eh. You're going to see Koenji after this, right? Yes. So you're meeting up with Koenji, right? I'm not, actually. With Michan's reply, the atmosphere around us froze. There was silence, and time passed. But I couldn't remain silent forever, so I resumed the flow of time. So, Koenji knows nothing about today. Michan, who nodded in agreement, somehow looked like she was about to cry. Ah, that should have been the obvious course of action, isn't it? I wasn't thinking at all because of the nerves and tension and all that. I don't even have Koenji Kun's contact information. I thought you had arranged it. I interpreted it arbitrarily. I'm really sorry. As she spoke, Michan could no longer hold back her tears. Luckily, there was no one in the lobby, but it would be troublesome if someone saw her. First of all, you should calm down. I'm not really close with Koenji, but I do know where to find him. Really? Although there was no certainty, I knew there was a pretty good chance I could find him. I think if it's this time, Koenji might be at the gym. The gym? The one on the second floor of Kiaki Mall? Yeah. I started going there recently myself. Koenji often comes in on Saturday and Sunday mornings. I had seen him walking out after finishing his workout at noon several times. Seeing the bright outlook, Michan recollected herself, and we set off for Kiaki Mall. On the way, I glanced at Michan, whose eyes were still slightly red, and thought, she's good at studying and has a quiet personality, but she's very weak and fragile when confronted with unexpected situations. She wasn't exactly a rare type, not necessarily common, but certainly a high school girl who could be found anywhere. That was why her connection to Koenji was intriguing. Although liking or disliking her is another matter, objectively, Michan's appearance is much better than average. Perhaps she happened to hit Koenji's taste and was being secretly favored. However, Koenji didn't give the impression that he'd keep quiet about his preferred woman. If anything, if there was someone he was interested in within the class, he seemed more likely to actively appeal to them. It was a contradiction for a man with absolute confidence in himself to not approach the woman he was interested in. If this was true, it only proved that Koenji didn't have that absolute confidence in himself. Or perhaps not. Different strokes for different folks. Koenji might claim that he preferred keeping his distance from the women he likes, and that was his way of showing affection. I thought about it in various ways, but still, I could only come to one conclusion. Trying to read Koenji's thoughts was just a waste of time. In the end, the only way to understand his true intentions was to meet him in person and hear it from him. I entered Kiaki Mall, which was already open for business, and headed straight to the second floor without any detours. Then I had Michan wait in front of the gym while I checked out the state of things inside. As expected, he's here. As I anticipated, Koenji was in the midst of training. It looked like he was tackling the bench press, which he would most likely finish soon. After all, Koenji always ended his workouts with the bench press before leaving the gym. Despite his exhaustion, he was managing a weight of 200 kilograms with a smile and a good amount of sweat. I had to wonder if there was anyone else in their second year of high school capable of doing that with such ease. At any rate, he was close to finishing. It was certain that he'd hit the showers next and leave soon after. To avoid any awkward sightings, I quickly left the training room. Upon exiting, I was approached by the gym staff member Akiyama-san, with whom I exchanged brief greetings and then left. I had also promised to meet Mishima-sensei, but I could surely skip it for today. How was it? I think he'll be out in about 20 or 30 minutes. If you don't mind, we could wait here. Why yes. After that, we sat on a bench near the entrance of the gym and waited. Without much conversation between us, we just listened to the music playing inside Kiaki Mall. I'm starting to get a bit nervous. As the time drew closer, she seemed to be sensing the anticipation. I have no idea how Koenji will react after this. Neither do I. By the way, 
what did you get him as a gift? Um, I wasn't sure what to get him, so I decided on a face towel and a hand towel. Wow. That's quite an off-the-wall gift. You might think so, but I thought it was something he would like. I regularly see Koenji Kuen using both. Is that so? I knew about the hand mirror, but I wasn't aware of this. Yes. I thought if it's a luxurious, organic cotton towel he might accept it, so. Oh. That's quite a budget. It seemed that Michan hadn't been able to stick to my advice of giving a small gift. Uh, why yes. I'm sorry. How much was it? Well, about 12,000 yen. So, it was about the same price as the total amount given or a little over that. It was a situation that could have been anticipated given Michan's personality. It's fine. I hope Koenji likes it. Yes. I have to properly return the favor for his help. Even though she was feeling tense and flustered, Michan responded firmly. In the end, it might have been the right decision to choose a gift that was worth going over the budget. When we'd waited nearly 40 minutes, longer than expected, Koenji appeared from the gym. H. He came out. From our view, Koenji seemed to immediately notice us, but he made no change in his expression and crossed by us without saying a word. We seemed outside of his interest. Seeing his behavior, it was hard to believe that he harbored any affection towards Michan or had been secretly supporting her. However, from the testimony of the convenience store clerk, we were 99% certain it was Koenji. Therefore, the only option was to confirm the truth with him. Michan quickly got up from the bench and started chasing after Koenji. Um, Koenji Kuen. Can I have a minute of your time? Michan called out from behind him, causing Koenji to stop in his tracks and elegantly turn to look back. Do you need something from me, Wang girl? Eh, Wang what? Koenji must have made a reference to Michan's real name, Wang, Meiyui, calling her Wang girl, a nickname likely only Koenji would use, leading to Michan's confusion. Michan seemed unable to grasp the nickname, but she swallowed her confusion and steeled her resolve. She tightly clenched the handles of the paper bag she held in front of her. I wanted to discuss something with you. Can I take a little bit of your time, please? Michan addressed Koenji with a polite, albeit soft, voice filled with determination. Koenji appeared to consider her request for a moment, then raised his arm briskly and shook his head. I'm sorry, but I'm a bit in a rush right now. Let's talk another time. Ha ha ha. With that, he laughed towards us, turned his back, and started walking away again. Oh, oh no. Michan, who seemed to be the type to carefully consider things, was clearly flustered at being rejected by Koenji in a way she hadn't anticipated. I found myself somewhat surprised too. What should we do now? Try again. Oh. I needed a lot of courage to approach him this time. I might not get it back if I need to try again. Surely it would be a high hurdle for Michan to approach Koenji in the same situation again. In that case, we had no choice but to push through it today. Then we should just follow Koenji. But wouldn't that be a terrible bother? Normally, yes. But if you can't try again, then no matter how much of a bother, we have to go ahead, right? If the nuisance is just someone walking around, fully clothed, I feel like he'd be unconcerned with it. What should we do? If we lose sight of him, we'll have no choice but to give up. What should we do? She couldn't make up her mind, hesitating between moving forward and stepping back. It was clear from her demeanor that following Koenji was her primary intention. So should I continue to take the lead as I had been? I'll take responsibility if we're caught following him. Let's go. Ye yes. Stealth tailing it is, then. And that was how we decided to tail Koenji. Observing from a distance. I didn't see the need for secrecy, but Michan was eager, so I decided not to voice any unnecessary objections. I went downstairs as Koenji went down the escalator, slowly checking the direction he was heading in and positioning Michan behind me. Meanwhile, with his long stride, Koenji continued deeper into the mall. 
shouldn't we be in a hurry? We might lose him. It's fine if we do. Everyone went to the mall on a daily basis. Most students had a mental map of the place. Of course, there were several shops in Koenji's path, but none had significant depth to their floors. A quick glance would reveal all the customers. At the very end was an open cafe area. Unless he used one of the several exit points prepared along the way, we had no worries of losing sight of him. In terms of those exits, it would be faster to go back the way he came if he was heading home. The probability of him needing to use a specific exit wasn't very high. At the bottom of the stairs, I caught sight of Koenji's retreating figure, now smaller in the distance. It seems like he's heading to the cafe. That makes it easier for us. Indeed. After confirming from a distance that Koenji had finished ordering and was holding a cup, I moved closer and noticed Koenji and a female student sitting at a two-person table. Who's that? That's Inoshima Midoriko from Class 3B. Do you know her? I've only seen her in the OAA app. Let's get closer. But wouldn't Koenji kun see us if we get closer? Well, we've been tailing him so far, but I wonder if it's really necessary. It should be just right for us to wait nearby until Koenji's meeting is over. Obviously, it would be worse to say that we were hiding and waiting for her to leave him alone. Anyway, I wasn't interested in what they were talking about. At this point, I'd like to know what kind of conversations Koenji Kuen usually has. However, Michan seemed to have flipped a switch, appearing reluctant to be discovered. You mean eavesdrop? I know it's wrong, but... He may not be honest about why he gave me the gift, and there might be clues in their conversation. No, I highly doubt there'd be any clues in his conversation with Inoshima, who seems completely unrelated. Let's keep tailing him. If that will make you satisfied Michan, then I have no objections. Let's move from this side. While Koenji was chatting with Inoshima, he probably wasn't paying attention to his surroundings. But if we entered his line of sight, we couldn't be sure that he wouldn't notice us. Michan and I made a strategic exit from the mall through a side door and aimed to re-enter from the opposite side. Although it took several minutes to circle around, Koenji had just bought a drink, implying that he'd stay for a while. However, by the time we entered the mall and arrived at the cafe, Koenji was nowhere to be found. Only Inoshima was there, scrolling through her phone. Might he be in the bathroom? No. Koenji's drink is missing. That can't be. He must have finished his business with Inoshima and left in that short span of time. So. Does that mean we can't meet him today? That's what I thought, but there doesn't seem to be a need to rush. We spotted Koenji, who unabashedly showed himself returning the way he had come. Koenji Kuen. Oh. Wang girl and Ayana Koji boy. You've come to chase after me again. It's tough being popular. Ha ha ha. A grand misunderstanding, but I suppose Koenji must have finished his errands. Do you have a moment? Without time to stutter due to the rush, Michan smoothly started the conversation. His drink isn't with him. Did he finish it right away? Of course. My personal business finished quicker than expected. He just had a short meeting with Inoshima Senpai. I couldn't even guess what they discussed. Was it you, Koenji Kuen, who left stuff from the convenience store in front of my door while I was absent from school? The long sought supporter. She was determining the reason behind his actions. Would Koenji admit it honestly? Would he be surprised and bewildered? Or deny it? It was me who gave you those items, but why does it matter? Koenji confidently affirmed without a hint of hesitation or dishonesty. A very Koenji-like demeanor, truly unexpected. Er, um, why, did you? Why? If someone is in trouble, I help them. Aren't you the same type of person? Eh. Reprising with a reasonable answer, Michan was at a loss for words. If that answers your question, I guess you can leave now. Michan seemed at a loss for how to respond to his remark. Hold on. 
It might be none of my business, but there's something that bothers me. It's natural to help someone in trouble. But to be frank, from what I've observed of you, you don't help everyone. Yet, you helped me Chan. This has happened repeatedly, which suggests there's a special reason behind it. In a probing manner, and with vague expressions, I tried to nudge him. You sure choose your words well, Ayanakoji boy. You won't let me get away with implying it was a whim. It's not like I helped Wang girl out on a whim. I detest hypocrisy. But that doesn't mean I disrespect goodwill. When I feel a sincere debt, I consider it natural to repay it. It's just that. Even though Koenji seemed to be uttering something cool, Michan was obviously clueless about the situation. She was still frozen. One thing was for sure, he didn't seem to have any unexpected romantic feelings for her. Are we done here? When Koenji said that, time finally started moving again for Michan, who had been frozen in place. I, I don't remember doing anything for you. I don't think you owe me anything. According to what you said, it seems like I've helped you before. Apologetically but affirmatively, she questioned after understanding the situation. Koenji lightly brushed back his hair. Ha ha ha. He cheerfully laughed. That's why it's not out of hypocrisy but goodwill. Just a trivial matter that you don't even need to remember. In other words, this was his explanation. Koenji had once been helped by Michan in some way. And he was helped not from hypocrisy, but from natural goodwill. That was why he had always acted in an unusually considerate manner towards Michan. Even when she was absent from school this time, he was helping her in return for that goodwill, that was what it meant. I don't remember it at all, but, well, please accept this for now. Saying that she thrusted out a paper bag with a set of towels she had bought as a thank you gift. I don't need this. I don't think it's a matter of receiving thanks. W.L., if you don't like this, I don't mind if you don't accept it. But in that case, would you at least let me pay you back? The money you spent for me isn't cheap. Unfortunately, I'm not in need of money at the moment. I don't want it. I found his statement strange. Certainly, for an ordinary student, there would be nothing particularly noticeable about it. It was only natural to think that Koenji, who made a fortune in the deserted island test, had a lot of money. However, Koenji had a strong image of being a spendthrift. He had previously stated that he was a believer in not keeping money overnight. Of course, if he said he was saving now, that would be the end of it, but considering he just recently bought a big TV, it was possible he was still squandering money. It might just be a lie, a convenient excuse not to take the points from Michan. B but that'll be a problem. That. I can't get rid of the feeling of guilt, in that case, could you at least tell me what I did for you? Oh, dear. You seem to have quite a difficult personality. Didn't I say? It's a trivial matter that you don't even need to remember. It's neither more nor less than that. There's nothing more to say. Michan appeared to have run out of ways to initiate a conversation with Koenji. With a somewhat downcast look, she bowed her head to Koenji again. Can you let me go now? Why yes. I have something I'd like to ask you privately, I interjected. I don't want to be popular with men, but it seems you too like to pry. It's important. If you feel gratitude, there's a possibility you'll cooperate with the class in the future, right? That's nonsense, Ayanakoji boy. I'm needed for the class to win, and for that, you have to show goodwill towards me. That becomes hypocrisy, you see. He wouldn't accept any act aimed at getting something in return as genuine goodwill. It could only come naturally. As long as we live under the rules of this school, there can be no goodwill. Am I wrong? Maybe. You should already know this. There's no way you can make me your ally, not by any means. That's true. So far, no matter how many times I've tried, I haven't come up with a guaranteed way to get your full cooperation. That's right. I won't change until I graduate, even after that. No matter how much cleverness you guys squeeze out, it won't reach or resonate with my heart. 
Of course, this includes you as well. So what are you going to do with a special exam like this time? What if Horikita decides not to protect you? We can't exactly say that the chance of her breaking her promise to you is zero. There might be a situation where you can't avoid expulsion, even if you make a fuss later. We could threaten and force him to help. I've always protected myself. It's as simple as that. In other words, he was confident enough to pull through even without protection. Well, that makes things easy. I'll tell Horikita that there's no need to protect you. Just having one less student to protect in the class gave us an advantage. Naturally, I didn't think Horikita would betray his trust. Do as you please. Regardless, there's no point in trying to obligate me when I won't reciprocate. And there was Koenji, acting like an immovable decoration, no matter how much he wriggled. If that was how it was, maybe I could take advantage of the situation and exclude Koenji. Koenji had exceptional abilities, but his presence was a double-edged sword. Depending on the special exam's details, Horikita might continue being hindered by him. If I were the class leader, frankly, Koenji would be superfluous. The rules on the uninhabited island were only between Horikita and me, and third parties had no involvement. One option might be to cut him out while I had the chance, but... However, Koenji, who had been carefree until now, had suddenly changed his tune and his gaze sharpened. If someone tries to ostracize me, they'd better be prepared. Had he read my thoughts? No, it must be his wild intuition. Prepared, huh? I wonder what you're going to do. That's part of the surprise. It wouldn't be as simple as attacking a specific person. One should prepare for actions that could shake the class's position. Will you open that box? Although, it may cause you to reassess your overvaluation of yourself. I, for one, don't plan on doing that. Horikita is the class leader. So be it. I have dates after this, so I'd better get going. I didn't understand why he chose to use the unusual way of referring to his date, but I don't think I'll be talking with Koenji anytime soon. Koenji is implying that he has multiple dates to attend to, Dito, the typical spelling, versus, Detsu, the word Koenji uses, which isn't how the word, date, is spelled slash pronounced. This is done as a way of sounding more, Englishy, and showing off. I had been observing Koenji in the same class for a long time. He was really an oddball. While he was indeed a challenge, it was a fact that we must win while carrying him. Ah, um. Ayana Koji Kuen. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask him a few things since he told us something unusual, and I got carried away. I gave a light apology to Michan, who I had left alone. That's fine, but, um. What is it? No, it's nothing. I had indeed used a somewhat threatening tone with Koenji. I guess that was what bothered Michan a bit, 